Hello, this is lesson three of the DrivePrint technical certification. In this lesson, uh, and specifically in this video, we're going to cover uh, setting up the mobility manager, which uh, involves mobile printing, uh, submission through iOS app, Android app, mailboxes, AirPrint, uh, an upload page, um, and a couple other small features. Uh, this also serves as the basis for the other modules, as this is going to cover the auto setup part of the um, print engine. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is log in as admin and admin. Uh, another thing that you'll notice if you're a user of DriveDM, you can also use public and public, which is the DriveDM default username and password. Um, right now, I have only one license here, which is a mobility manager license, and it's licensed for five printers. Now, remember that the licenses are only based off printers. It's one license ticket for each printer and for each module, and it doesn't matter how many users you have. So one big new feature in version 3 is the ability to do an auto setup. So if you go up to the top and you go to this setup page, you'll see that we're able to actually search the network for printers on, uh, on the same subnet and search out specific IP addresses on different subnets find printers and determine which type they are, what driver they should use, and based off the licenses that we have, we'll go ahead and set them up within DrivePrint. So right now I only have Mobility Manager licenses, so the only thing that's going to be set up here is these printers with the correct driver as a printer here in DrivePrint. But you'll see when we have the embedded apps and the embedded, embedded modules that it'll go ahead and interface with the administration page of the device and set up those pieces as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is check to make sure, okay, so I don't have any printers down here in the printers and MFDs. So if I go back to setup, you'll see that I'm going to select this server's IP address. And this is going to look at your interfaces here on this host machine. And that'll determine from where we're going to search. And what it'll do is it'll send out an SNMP broadcast to all the possible IP addresses on this subnet. So 10.0.1. Uh, and then zero. So if I hit detect printers, it's going to look for every printer here on this subnet. If it finds one, it's a Samsung multifunction device. And you can see that I can limit the search here. I can raise the time. I can also limit it based off the platform. And so here we go. I found a Samsung. You look over here though and you see that it says no driver found. So what that means is based off the logic that we have here, there's no driver that's suitable for this device. So there's not a specific driver for it, and nor do we have a universal driver installed on this machine. And you might remember from before that what we do is that we actually create a new logical printer with a drive port that we're going to use for rasterization of the file. So we're not actually printing via the spooler, we're dispatching it ourselves, but we're going to need to create that logical printer so that we can set all the finishing options and we can create that print file, the PRN file, with all the correct PJL header elements, so we know that it's two-sided, color, um, things like that. So that's why we need to make this logical printer. And here you'll see that there's no driver set up. So it's not the end of the world. Um, what we're going to do is just go ahead and set it up. And you'll see that you can actually manually select a driver here uh, in the next section. So if I go down to printers and MFDs, you'll see that the Samsung printer was not enabled. And the reason it was enabled is that because down here, we don't have a Samsung driver for it. So I could go into edit mode, enable it, and set a driver. And when I set a Windows driver, it's going to give me a list of all the drivers that I have installed here. And it's going to let me pick one to set up. But I don't actually have a Samsung one here. So I could set up just a generic HP PCL driver or the XPS uh, driver, um, and a lot of times that'll work, but you want to probably get the specific driver for that device or the um, universal driver. But if I configure that right there, I'll actually create a drive printer using that um, driver that's installed, and now the Samsung's set up as a target. I'm going to go back to the setup though because sometimes the printer is not on the same subnet and thus the SNMP broadcast won't work. But if I actually know the IP address of a specific printer, I can enter it in here and do a, a specific search. 
So for instance, I know that there's a sharp MFP at this IP address. So I, sit, I, I hit search and there we go, I find it. You'll notice here too that it says new device detected rather than no driver found. And that's because I actually have the correct driver installed for this machine. It'll also work if I have the universal driver. I can also put in a suggested printer name before I set it up. So let's say this is the front office printer. That's going to be the friendly name for that device. So you see it's configuring, it's setting up the Windows queue, and then it's configured right on. So if I go down there, I have the front office printer. It shows me the driver that it used. It's a OSA machine. And if I look down here, I could change the port. Typically, if it successfully sets up, that means that port's open. That's the port that we're going to send the raw print file to after we've uh, converted it and rasterized it. I can also choose to announce it as a mobile device and down here I can set it up as a mobile target so I want people to be able to print directly to it from their iOS apps and also the Android app. If I go to the advanced section for the printer I see that there's a supported printer languages here and what this means is that it's going to actually ask the printer which types of files it can print directly. So if we get a PDF for instance we're not going to try to turn it into an image before we send it off to the printer. We'll merely pass that PDF to the printer, um, and if we're changing any of the finishing options, we'll do that. But the reason why you would do that is to maybe save a little time processing it here. Uh, Drive doesn't need to turn it into an image, so there's no reason to do that on the server. Just send it off to the printer, and it'll, it'll print out. Sometimes if you're having fidelity issues, the print's coming out incorrectly, um, either turn this off or on, um, if it's printing out black and white, it should be color. Uh, you know, you never know with the driver. Um, flip these settings, take the PDF out of supported printer languages, and let Drive convert it before it sends it off, for instance. So that's that. Those two printers are now set up as targets for me. Um, if I go to the upload page now, I see that I have a front office printer and the Samsung and also the MyQ. And this is actually the page that the user will see if they log in. They won't have all the stuff on the left. They're not an administrator. So I can pick the front office printer. I can select a file here. Um, I know that I probably have a PDF somewhere. Let's, let's find it. I've got in the drive folder, in the drive print folder, um, I've got a doc folder, and there's a big PDF there. I'm going to go ahead and print that manager, uh, mobility manager uh, PDF. I'm going to make it monochrome and I'm going to upload it. So Drive is not going to convert it, it's just going to send it right off to the printer and it should be converted and printed. I can look at it here in pending jobs. I see it's got a UDID. It's being sent right to the front office printer. Um, 27 pages, maybe I'll cancel that. And then once it's printed, it'll show up in completed jobs. I guess it was sent. So that's one method of submitting a job is the upload page, and the users can do that. Um, another method is for them just to do a file print. And you'll see here if I go into the um, control panel, and I see the printers and faxes, a MyQ printer was created. So if I file print, if I share that MyQ printer out and file print to it, it's actually going to send the job to that user's queue. Um, so they'll see it on their phone in their My Jobs, and if they have the pull print app, they'll see it in their queue. It'll send it as the user who's logged into that Windows session. So I'm logged in as Drive. It'll send it in as a user named Drive if that exists. You'll see also here that, um, let's look at this Drive printer that was created. If I go to the, well, I guess I don't want the printing preferences. I want the printer properties. And you see here that this printer is set up with a port, and it's a drive print port. So what that means is it's going to convert the file when it gets it into an image using the drive converter. It's going to pass it to this logical printer to rasterize it to get all the settings correct. 
And then at the end, it's not actually going to submit it via the spooler, it's going to give it back to drive via this port. So that's what's going on there. A third method for submission is the IPP service. And if that's running and the printer is set to announced, or the queue, it's going to broadcast the printer or a queue as an AirPrint printer. One thing to keep in mind is that it's got to be uh, on the same subnet as the server because AirPrint uses Bonjour and it doesn't route. So this server, this host right here, um, we need the phone to be on the same subnet, the same physical network as this host. Otherwise you won't see it. Another method, method of submission is the iPhone and the Android app, and that's here with the core web services. So the user is going to need to have a username and a password. Um, I'm going to cover that in the next video, how to set that up with LDAP. And the user will be able to submit via the app. Uh, the Android app is on the Google Play Store, and the iPhone app is on the uh, App Store. The last method for submission is via a mailbox. And if you go down here to Mobility, you'll see the Mailboxes section. And uh, I'm going to cover this in the next video.